Hey everyone, welcome to the panel discussion. Um, I hope you enjoyed that time um, with uh, Ken Nash. I'm now here with Amy Thompson and uh, Ken Willard. Welcome to you two. Good evening. How are you? Good, good. Hey, Ken. Hi there. Good to have you as well. So, um, what an exciting time to be here launching um, Marketplace Multipliers. It seems like it's been a long time coming. Uh, for me, it's been a year and a half. I know it doesn't seem that long um, for you all. So, um, so glad that you all have joined us out there in Facebook land as well. Um, Amy Thompson is the conference lay leader for the Missouri Annual Conference. Welcome, Amy. And Ken Willard is the conference um, developer for the West Virginia Conference, but we still claim him as Missouri as well, friend from Missouri. So we're glad that you're here too, Ken. All Thank of you. Us, all of us lady gathered here um, today. So Amy, you decided to launch Marketplace Multipliers as an initiative here in the Missouri Conference um, for laity in partnership um, with, their, with their pastors. So, Tell us, why did you decide to do that? So Marketplace Multipliers made sense to me when I read the book. Um, we know that as United Methodists, we are a lady movement and we're lady driven. And so it made sense to me that we should be having conversations about how do we help laity, how do we equip them? How do we empower them that, to then go out and be intentional um, and their daily living about living out their, their faith, but also feeling comfortable in living out their faith so that they can be interacting with others. And so that felt important to me. The other thing is I loved the partnership piece, like to have lady and clergy working together um, to, build, to, to, build, to build these opportunities for laity felt important to me as well, because obviously I always think laity are important because they're a gazillion of us and there's only so many clergy but together um, we can do the work and have a greater impact on the kingdom so it just made sense after looking through the book and having conversations and listening to ken great thank you and you just saw um lori bruins uh, pop in and i i swear friends we did not color coordinate although we all have on red um <laughs> For, for those of you beyond Missouri, you probably still know that there was this little Chiefs game uh, yesterday. Um, Ken was wondering why we all weren't wearing black, but um, here we are, uh, still Chiefs fans. But Lori Bruins uh, is a district lay leader here in the Missouri Conference. So welcome, Lori. Glad that you were able to join us as well. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely. Glad you're here. Um, so, uh, Amy, you know, we, we launch a lot of different programs for sure. Um, how is this different than anything else that we've ever done? <laughs> um, well, I think first and foremost, it's going to be unique for each church setting and unique for each lay person that feels called or has this passion to be living out their call in the marketplace. And I think one of the things that Ken said um, in the video, he talks about how the marketplace can be anything. And I think that again is what's uniquely different about this is I could have a professional job where I'm working in an office setting. I could um, be a stay at home mom and I go to a play group that's the same people every week and I'm interacting with them. Maybe my daughter's in Girl Scouts. And so again, I have this place in which I'm interacting with the same people over and over and over. Um, but I haven't quite figured out yet how to integrate my faith with my everyday living. And so I think that's one of the things for me that um, I think is, is uniquely different is I think it gives everyone the opportunity to do it in their way. But I think the commonality is that we as a church or clergy or other lay leaders can equip each other. Like we, we all have gifts and talents and we can share those with one another so that we can equip one another so that we can go out and do this work. Absolutely, absolutely. Because marketplace sometimes is a little misleading because we think of that as you know, a nine to five job. So to expand that definition, I think is really, really helpful. Ken, so tell me what most excites you about thinking about um, marketplace multipliers and the movement that that could be. Yeah, so I would have to build on what Amy just said. I mean, um, you know, we're part of a laity movement. That's our history. And I think that, um, you know, for, for us to look forward 
uh, really requires us to understand where we've come from. And I think that uh, through, through a lot of different um, reasons, we, we in the church have, have sh drifted away from laity involvement. And, and that's not something to lay as blame on anybody. It's just, it's kind of where we've found ourselves. And I really believe for us um, in the church uh, to fulfill our mission, we've got to get back to that. And it's, and it's you know, Amy's right. It's, it's, not, it's not lady in front of clergy. It's not clergy in front of lady. It's not, you know, it's, it has nothing to do with any of that. It's, this is meant to be, you know, done together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that's the beauty of the church. Yes is when it's together um you know when we when we read in ephesians 4 12 about you know our, our our purpose is to equip the people for the work of the ministry uh, for god's glory i mean that's that's not meant to sit on the shoulders of any one person and that's i think it's dangerous when it when it resides with one person who just happens to have a certain role in the church it's got to be all of us Absolutely. and uh and i think it's you know it is it is time for for laity to to reclaim frankly their role in ministry and to step back up uh, the beauty is we've seen it done <laughs> uh, we've seen it done in our denomination we've seen it happen and we've seen the fruit of that. And, uh, and I think that's one of the things that really should drive us. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It can be done and it can be done again. And it happened in phenomenal ways. Yes. Yeah. It did. Phenomenal <laughs> ways. Uh, yeah. So Ken, I want to piggyback on that passage because I think also in that Ephesians 4 passage, it talks about maturing together. Yeah. And I think that's the other piece that I think marketplace multipliers can offer is this opportunity to mature together, whether I'm maturing with the people that I'm doing marketplace work with, or whether I'm maturing with the people, other marketplace leaders that are in my church because we have three or four of these going, or I'm maturing in my own discipleship because my clergy is leading me or is you know equipping me and guiding me and shepherding me. Um, and so I think that's the other piece of that passage too that I don't want to lose sight of either is we're, we're equipping the saints, but we're also maturing together and that's going to look different for each of us, but it so can happen um, in so many different ways, but I just think this is a great way in which to do it and to, hopefully people can find comfort in doing it together in this way. Amen. Right. Amen. You know, and one of the things that you said from the very beginning, Amy, was um, the comfort in it. You know, you spend so much more time in the marketplace than we do in the church by and large. Um, and sometimes you spend more time with coworkers um, or in those play groups or, you know, in, in those um, in the gym with friends or whatever um, than you do sometimes with your family. Mm -hmm. um, and so there are sometimes deeper relationships um, with with those folks than there are, you know, in other places. But yet sometimes we compartmentalize our lives. You know, we do church on Sunday in this amount of time, and then we leave that there, and then we do the rest of our lives. But the idea of marketplace multiplier is it's seamless, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, uh, we just live our authentic lives um, transparently. Um, and, it, and, and I think the other scary part of this that some people imagine, you know, it's like we're bringing our Bible to work, you know, and hitting people over the head with it, you know, and, and that's not, that's not what this is, you know, whatsoever. It's just showing up um, and, and living the Christian values and through, um, with intentionality through these conversations, um, faith comes up and you naturally are able to progress in those conversations with people and peak curiosity and um, you know, and the curiosity turns to questions and questions turn to praying together. And, you know, before you know it, you have a discipling group, you know, that happens in the parking lot or over lunch or, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. It's okay. I had something happen to me just a couple months ago at work. Uh, I was at a site and um, my alarm went off on my phone. So I have an alarm set on Tuesdays for 2.23 to remind me to pray for a, a group that I'm working with. And that was the agreed upon time that we would all stop and pray. 
And so it went off and I was meeting with the director and the assistant director and my alarm goes off. And it's the first time it's happened when I've been with people. Like it's just been that it's been, I've been by myself or I've been places, but not people have been around. And, I, and there was this moment of, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am so sorry. I just disrupted our meeting. And the director goes, she goes, what's that? She goes, what's that alarm for? And I, I had this moment, I was just going to say, oh, nothing, but I, something stopped me. And I said, well, I said, it's a, it's a group that I'm working with through church. And it's a moment for us to pray every Tuesday at 223. And so she looks at me, she goes, well, you're going to pray. And I looked at her and I said, I would like to. And she goes, well, why don't you just pray for all of us in this room and for whatever it is you're supposed to be praying for. So in that moment, I just, we stopped. I said a prayer for them. I said a prayer for my work group. Um, and as I walked out that day, I was like, again, this is integrating your life. Like oh. it would have been so easy to make up some excuse and not to share the real reason why my alarm went off. But here's what's happened since then, because I had that moment with them, which was like a three minute moment. Right. Um, they've lifted up prayer requests to me. We've had conversations yeah. about our faith life. Um, and so I think when we don't live compartmentalized lives, when we truly integrate, I think that was the word Ken used. And I love that word. When we truly integrate our life, um, these moments just present themselves. Um, yeah. And I don't know where this will go. I don't even, you know, I haven't had the conversations with them yet about church and things like, but for me, it's just about right now. It's still relationship. It's still about just living a Christ-like life in front of them and, and being relational with them. So. Wow. I love that. It's just kind of like it happened for a reason. It's kind of like God put you in the batter's box and it was like your moment. And it's like, it was. are you going to claim me or not? That's right. It yeah. was. It was. I did. And you did. I love it. I love it. Wow. Wow. So, um, Lori, yes. tell me what's your hope for Marketplace Multipliers as a district lay leader? My hope is just there is such joy in being a part of a even just calling it a movement mm. to be a part of a group when I am together and I watch the gifts of these other people, because God made each and every one of us so uniquely different. When you start seeing that synergy, um, I think, I guess I would even want to say that this is a possibility for us to truly become disciples. We, we don't mm. become Christians, we're disciples. And so I really look forward to watching other people grow because when other people grow and take chances, then I think it makes us a little bit braver and stronger mm -hmm. to go out there and um, do it our way. And I think that's the biggest piece that I want people to walk away with um, is that it's God uniquely wired them for a certain way and they're gonna reach different people than maybe I'm gonna reach. Mm -hmm. Right. And we need all of them to create the church. So that's my hope. Wow. Um, and, and I love it. Like Amy sharing her story probably just gave other people the courage that, you know, the next right. time their alarm goes off, <laughs> you know, um, they're going to be more likely to, to answer. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's part of this too, is um, giving examples of, of, of helping people see how easily it can be integrated when I think we become fearful of, of the separation, you know, that we feel required to do, but it can be so much easier than that. So, um, Amy, I'm just curious. I mean, you've spent some time around Ken Nash, but, you know, he's always so inspiring. Um, what, what did you take away from um, the uh, video, uh, the, the time that he gave us around um, his thoughts around marketplace multipliers. Mm -hmm. So my favorite, uh, to quote him, my favorite was the church has moved beyond the building. And mm -hmm. as I think about like, A, we should have been beyond the building forever now, but <laughs> thanks to COVID, we are now beyond the building. Yeah. Um, and so when I think about that and his phrase about being an influencer, like as, as you start to kind of like, where am I an influencer at? Where, you know, again, back to, is it your marketplace? Is it the play group? Is it the Girl Scouts? Is it the baseball field? Is it, you know, just where, and, and maybe it is at church because for some of us, we 
we have um, some work to do in our church communities about building disciples. Um, and so um, wherever it is, so that, that influence piece really captures me because again, I don't think we always give ourselves enough credit yeah. that we have that kind of influence. And when we, when we live a life for Christ and when we are gosh, just when we're good to people and we listen to people and, you know, we take time and share our resources, like it can be from the basics to, you know, pretty extensive and involved. Any layer of that um, requires us to be present and it requires us to, I feel like, give of ourselves in a way that is so rewarding in what we get back from that. Um, and that, in my mind, that gives me more power to influence more. Like that just feeds my soul. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, he used that. I think, again, it's, influence can be a scary word for some of us. But I don't see it as a scary word. I see it as my friend in that mm -hmm. my influence is about my relationship with others and the way I get and the way in which I can help minister to them and they can minister to me. Right. Right. And, and, you know, Amy, we probably think about as leaders out in the marketplace, you know, if we really thought about it, each of us have influence um, in the marketplace already as leaders, but, but maybe to even think about it as the influence as a Christian. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's even a, a different kind of influence, but then to see those as an influence as a Christian leader. Mm -hmm. That again, we're not thinking about it as an influence in our industry, an influence in um, the particular group we're hanging out, but an, an influence as a Christian leader, as I'm showing up in whatever role this is, oh. that those are both together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we maybe sometimes confuse influence with power. Yes. And I, I think those two are very Four. different. Mm -hmm. And there is a place for both of those in different ways yeah. for different yeah. moments. Yeah, great distinction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just gonna throw this out here and whoever wants to land on this one. Um, so for those folks out there who are a lay person and they're thinking, gosh, this might be kind of a, a cool thing to get started um, in our local church. Um, we call them huddles. So bringing a group of lay people together to start a marketplace um, multiplier huddle. Um, they wanna get one started. How would you go about approaching their pastor about starting a marketplace, a multiplier huddle? Well, so I gave some thought to this. Laura, you go, because you start, do you, if you have a thought, because I yeah, would love to. I, I, what would you be I doing? just feel like um, it's, it's, it's as simple as just being able to say, I want to grow my my Christian faith or my discipleship. I mean, even just starting as one as one with the pastor and I appreciated what Ken was saying. Only he could only handle, a pastor can only handle about a hundred people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so how do I fit into the structure? And then how do we get other people involved with their gifts for care ministry or prayer group or anything like that? And so I think those are that, that's that, I would start with myself first. Mm -hmm. How do I want to grow in my gifts? And then there's so many people would say, oh, well, she's going to do it. I'll go. I think it's just invitation mm -hmm. and excitement can make mm -hmm. a big difference. Mm -hmm. At least it's worked for me. <laughs> so Laura, you have passion. Laura, you always bring passion. Like this is one of the things mm -hmm. I love about you and your leadership is your passion. And I think that was my thing is, is I think as lay people, we've got, you've got to identify what you're passionate about. Um, and part of that is just being able to identify, like, what do you, what do you love doing and what comes naturally and, and, but also what kind of, what, what kind of has to push you a little bit? Cause that's my, that's my piece. You know, Ken talks about fan in the flame, that spark, like sometimes you've got the, you've got the flame, but you're not willing to push yourself a little bit to fan it, to get going. And so I think in my mind, it's like, what are you passionate about? And then I would say, you know, I, I would, I'd say lay people go to your clergy and say, I'm passionate about this. How can I get involved? And what can I do with this passion that I'm feeling that's burning at my soul? And maybe it is marketplace multiplier. And if it is, then 
then I say, tell your clergy person, what do you need? Like, what, what do you need to get that going? Um, and you may not know everything you need, like read the book, like the book has wonderful ideas and a ton of information. And that might be what you say to your clergy person is, you know, here's the book, here's your copy, read this book. And, and I want to talk to you about it. Cause I want to do this. I think for me, it's that you, you've got to go, like you have to get out of your pew. You have to get out of your chair and you have to go and let your clergy person know this, this means something to me. And it, it could be anything, as Lori said, it could be prayer ministry. It could be a, a food, a soup kitchen. Like, I don't care what it is. And again, any of those would be great because you could be marketplace multiplying in, yeah. in those areas if you're serving at a soup kitchen. Um, so I think for me, it's what's your passion and then go have that conversation with your pastor and ask for what you need. Yeah, so, so I would, no, I was just gonna, you know, again, all of the, I agree with all of that. The, the other piece I would add is to understand the context of your ministry and the, the, the current situation. If, if, thing, if things are, are challenging and there's not a real high level of trust, then, you know, even the very best thing can be seen differently than it's intended. So it's, it's just, it's good to, I go back, you know, Lori said, you know, have that conversation with the pastor, have that honest conversation, get everything on the table, you know, talk about what the challenges might be, talk about how it might be perceived, talk about, I mean, I don't know, just talk about everything. It, you know, nobody wants a surprise. Nobody wants there to be a feeling of separation. I mean, you know, I don't think anybody wants that, but we live in a context now in, in, in today's church world where there's just, you know, there's not always a high level of trust. There's not always a high level of, you know, relationship. And I think that, you know, that's, that's got to be foundational for, for this or for anything. Um, so I, I think, you know, as lay people, part of the responsibility is on us to make sure we're having those hard conversations, that we're having that open dialogue and discussion so that it is really a partnership, so that it is really we're doing this together. We're moving forward. You know, it's not about, um, you know, shine the light on any person or anything. It's except Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's it's keep, keep the focus where it's intended. Right. Um, but I just think, you know, unfortunately, we have to be realistic that in a lot of, you know, of church contexts right now, um, you know, there could be some lower levels of trust, there could be some challenges um, that I think we just have to take into consideration. And I'd like to also add something, if I could. Um, I'm also learning that our pastors can't read our minds and what we think that they know that we're good at something or whatever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't, I don't, it's not like you're going to toot your home, but say, I really want to grow in this area. And they, if they don't know that mm -hmm. they can't encourage you. So what does that look like to take that first step and say, Hey, pastor, I really, I'm interested in this or that. Can you help me? That is so different because I don't think they always know what is in our hearts. And, and most, most people will think, well, you just know. Well, no, they just don't know all the time. Go ahead and share. They're not mind love. readers, huh? <laughs> no, they are not mind readers. Right. No. <laughs> so um, let's kind of flip the question then. So what if there's a pastor out there that is listening and interested in um, maybe launching a um, marketplace multiplier um, huddle. And they are thinking about maybe praying about some uh, lay leaders who they do see that spark in. Um, how would you all suggest that they approach those folks that they're maybe seeing those sparks in to encourage them? I would love for them to have an I see in you conversation. Yeah. Like uh -huh. that's, 
I just want them to have that period for any purpose. Um, you know, that one-on-one -on -one conversation yep. and, and really identifying. So again, what Lori's like, identify what you see in me. Like I would not be where I am today if some people did not have that conversation with me over the years. And, and that conversation has changed over the years. It, it is not the same today that someone had with me 15 or 20 years ago. Um, and so I think, what do you see in me? And I think that opens the door to what Lori said, that I can let you know, A, I don't see that in myself, <laughs> or B, here, like, here's something else I wanna know about, or I wanna learn about or do, um, because then it becomes this two-way conversation. Mm -hmm. So one, I seen you. And then I think the second piece for me is, is be a partner in ministry. So again, you know, Ken said it, I can only be connected to so many lay people. So partner with a lay person in ministry and, and unleash them, you know, give guidance and some structure, like, you know, shepherd them, but then unleash them because so much, so much could happen when we're willing to, to turn, turn laity loose. Um, and so I, I feel like we can have this partnership and have this IC new conversation, like the sky's the limit uh -huh. for any, anything. Um, and I guess at the end of the day, the ascending church, like we have, we have to be moving outside the walls of our church. And, and so adopt that mentality, like challenge everyone to be sending like out the door, what you doing, how are you living, um, and clergy have that opportunity now. I feel like more than, again, as lay people, I think we are more receptive right now to how to live the church outside the walls than we have ever been, at least in recent history. So agree. And is it possible too, to be able to switch it even a little bit and say, I see in you X and I could really use your help in this area because my strength as a pastor is over here. Mm -hmm. And I could really use you in our ministry here at the church and move them. Mm -hmm. I, I think just being able to say, I could use your help could make a huge, huge difference. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, let, let's say... Uh, paint another scenario of maybe some other folks out there are going, boy, this sounds really great. I'd love to see this happen, but gosh, I'm a little hesitant. <laughs> and this sounds like awesome, but really not me. You know, I, I'm not equipped to do this. This sounds like great for you all, but you know, not me. Um, and, you know, if I say yes, I don't want to lead this. I can't lead this, right? If I'm the first one to step up, that means I'm going to have to lead it. Um, or maybe even think of themselves individually as a, as a marketplace multiplier. So what words of encouragement would you um, have for those individuals who are just hesitant to step up um, as an individual marketplace multiplier, but also as those who are thinking, oh, we need a huddle, but maybe I'm not the person uh, to start the huddle in my local church. I just think there's so, even if you just start ask, talking to a friend, say, you know, I've got this kind of idea or this desire. Um, and I also just believe that the spirit can be with you. It's not really always you doing that. It's you being transformed. And how does that look? Um, you're not going to do this alone. The spirit's with you. And if you're called and I do get passionate, it will, it will drive. It will make a difference. Um, and you're right. You don't have to be the one in charge, but you sure can be the one to say, hey, let's do this together. Mm -hmm. So I think prayer, like, I think that, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, prayer is just so powerful when, when we start with prayers. So again, if this is burning on your heart, mm -hmm. um, pray about that. And I, again, God's going to open up doors and, and conversations that will affirm that. And so um, starting there, and I think, again, I, I believe that some of us are natural leaders, whether we want to, to claim it <laughs> or not. 
Um, and so even if you were alone at your church and you were the one that wanted to do a marketplace um, group, at, at, let's say that you work a nine to five job, then, then again, talk with your pastor and go do it. And here's the beauty about the connectional system that we're in. I mean, and I'm sure, Kay, before we're done tonight, like we, we have this huddle network that we want to like connect people to. And so you're not going to be in this, even if you're the only person at your church, you have this whole, that, that's United Methodist at its best when we are connecting. And so I think there's beauty in that. Um, so not only might you be able to get that at your local church if there's more than one person interested, but you're if you're not, you're gonna get it in another in another platform. Um, and so I think that's the encouraging piece is you're not alone in this um, because you hopefully your pastor's partnering with you, but then there's the huddle and and there's however many other people are at your church. Like I just think, and and there, there's me or there's Lori Bruins or there's other district lay leaders. Like I feel like especially in the Missouri Conference, like there are plenty of people that are willing to equip and empower laity to have a movement. And so just being able to say it's me um, and we'll like, we'll connect you. Like, mm -hmm. so you're not alone. That's my encouragement is you are not alone. Yeah. Yeah. I would just add that if you think about the most powerful ministries you've ever seen in any local church, the, you know, the, soup kitchens that are feeding thousands of people or whatever it might be, chances are they started small. Mm -hmm. and, and in many cases, they started with one or two people. Mm -hmm. And it, it was not, let's go feed, you know, 10,000 people. It was, can we feed this one person? Okay. And, you know, we just, we, I think sometimes we lose sight of that. The power of just starting small just if you know you don't have to necessarily launch big uh, and not every church has you know a thousand people in it and and that's cool and if your church has 12 maybe there's three yeah that start a movement I, and you just you never know I, I don't think god cares about the numbers i think god cares about you know how are we how are we moving forward how are we you know, how, how are we joining others in this ministry? Right. Taking a next step. Yeah. Taking a next step. The only thing I think I might add is it, it, you might have that initial um, burning desire. And that next person that you ask to join you, you, you may end up being the cheerleader and they may end up being the organizer. You know, you never know how it's all going to come together with the different giftedness of the of the people, um, because one of the things um, as you begin to form huddles and, um, you know, we will have a welcome packet and give you step by step. Here's how to do it. And one of the first things we do um, is ask you just to pray about, you know, who are the people that that God is placing on your heart to invite to join you in this movement? And it could be. Um, people um, in your church. It could be people in your work community. It could be people in other churches, United Methodist churches, other people in the community in other churches. I mean, who knows who God's going to place in your, on your heart. Um, and all of that's going to happen with the spirit moving for a reason to bring together the right people for this moment, uh, for the intention of the movement that God wants to happen where you're at. Um, and so for whatever you're feeling, um, it's going to happen uh, for the role that you have in it. Um, and it's just taking the next faithful step. But, um, Amy's right. Uh, you know, whether it's you at your church or whether it's a huddle at your church, um, you're going to be connected um, in ways so that you will not be going at this alone and you're going to be having resources in ways um, so that you're going to feel like you're in a huddle, whether you're in a huddle or not, <laughs> whether, whether it's a huddle in your church or whether it's a virtual huddle um, from West Virginia um, or from um, across the pew or across the street. I mean, that's, that's the idea of this, of this whole thing. So um, I hope that this has given um, our viewers an idea of what um, marketplace multipliers is because it's kind of new to United Methodism. Um, but I think it's such an exciting thing. All new things happen at the fringes. 
right? And so it's kind of cool that this is kind of launching out of churches, but taking us to the fringes, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think we have to be warned that this is not a movement to get people necessarily back um, to the church on Sunday, right? This, this, this movement may look different than what we think of a typical um, church growth. Mm -hmm. And this may end up being, you know, micro groups. Um, it may end up being um, some natural growth um, on a Sunday morning, but it may end up launching another kind of worship um, on a different night in the church. It may end up um, a different ministry group that serves together on a Wednesday night somewhere. I mean, we have no idea what's going to happen. And I think that um, is a scary part of it, but it's the most exciting part of it too, is because um, we're just going to let um, God do his thing through this. And that's what it's all about is everyone being released um, to serve and to let God move through this and reach people that I don't think we can reach through the traditional church. Amen. Right. So um, I'd love for each of you just to um, kind of close with um, what is your final word that you'd like to leave um, with that listener out there that is still just a little bit hesitant of, is God calling me at this moment? Mm -hmm. I tell you, um, it is, it can be very, very scary, but that first step, um, it's worth it. It's worth it to grow, to be different in Jesus Christ. Year by year, I grow and I, I gain so much. So I think I gain more sometimes than others because I'm getting that relationship. So I encourage you, if you really want to start to grow in your discipleship, this is, it's, it's a good step. Don't be afraid. You know, I, I would share that uh, something that I heard today in a, another meeting, um, but, uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about uh, liminal space the last couple of years, and somebody made a comment that they thought, you know, they're, they're kind of burned out on that. And uh, one of the one of the bishops that was was on the meeting uh, was talking about threshold, mm -hmm. and you know there's lots of different uh, meanings for that. There's lots of lots of different images that come to mind, um, but you know that's that's kind of how I think about this this movement is you know we're we're on a threshold, and um, this is this is an exciting place. We're not where we we were, um, and we're not yet where God's calling us. Uh, but this is this is an opportunity for us to really come together, like I don't think we've done in a long time, uh, as a church and as a movement. And Kay, I, I agree with you 100%. If we go at it with ulterior motives, <laughs> I don't think that's of God. Um, if it's about getting people to come into the building or, or increasing the budget or anything like that, um, I just don't think that's of God. Um, but if it's sharing the good, the good news, uh, if it's, um, you know, Amy's example is, is outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, when the alarm goes off and we're, we're there and we share you know, to me, that's first Peter. That's, you know, be prepared, mm -hmm. uh, answer that question. But I, I think that's, that's part of what this movement's all about. Mm -hmm. I think, Kay, I would say that, like, I, I preached on this at annual conference. I mean, we all have a call. Some of us are called to vocational ministry as a clergy and, and, but every lay person has a call as well. And, and I think, when we can live an integrated life, like we're bringing all of that, I'm, I'm recognizing that there's a call and I may not always have a clearly defined path for that call, but if I'm open, so if I'm praying and I'm open to the spirit, it, it will unfold before me. Mm -hmm. And then I think if I live into that, then I have this integrated life that's no longer separated by here's where, I, here's how I am at church and here's where I am at like I'm living a Christ-like life every day through the, my words, my actions. And 
and for me, all of that's so relational, like who I am with on a daily basis, like I'm in relationship with them. And so I think if, if there's this still this little hesitancy or just uncertainty, like you are called and God will be present with you and you just, just walk your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, like this is what the broken world needs to see that as disciples, we don't have it all figured out, but I'm walking the path. Yeah trying again and again, day after day to get it, to get, to get myself right. Um, and that doing that and walking that with someone again, as, as Lori said, like there is joy in that uh -huh. there's revelation in that. Um, but at the end of the day, there's love and grace in that, which again is what we have to offer the world, but that's what the world also needs, um, at this time. And so even if you go to work and do this with one person, that is one life changed. Mm -hmm. And if you have 12 people in your church and 12 people do this, that's 12 lives changed. If you have a hundred people in your church and a hundred people do this, that's a hundred. Like, I think that's my piece is, and, and it doesn't matter whether they ever don the doors of your church. What matters is their life has been touched with the love of Christ that you have given. Um, so. Mm. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. So friends, um, marketplacemultiplier.org uh, to get more information and um, to register as an individual or as in huddle. Um, to pick up the book, you can get that on um, Market Square Publishing, Amazon, uh, other websites. Uh, reach out to any of us. We'd be happy to help you take your next step. But Ken, you painted a picture for me that it feels like we're being called to walk across the threshold and through the door tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Lori, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Ken, thank you for joining us. Amy, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm just excited for what God has in store for us um, and uh, just can't wait to see what happens through Marketplace Multipliers. Thank you all for joining us um, tonight. Spread the word. Uh, because a movement is happening. I can feel it. So good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Good night.